of any angle. So we're expanding out of the first quadrant and now we're going to be able to move through all four of the quadrants and figure out the trigonometric values and ratios for that. But before we get there, we need to look at a definition um, for working with these. Okay, so we're going to let theta be an angle in standard position. So again, that means that our initial side is on the x-axis going toward the positive side with the point x, y as a point on the terminal side of theta and the r value here, the, or our radius value, uh, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared and that being not equal to zero. Okay, so let's just sketch up what this would look like. So here I have my Cartesian plane with x and y. Uh, being that theta is an angle in standard position, well, here is our initial side and we're going to be on the terminal side of theta. So if we draw a terminal angle out here, here, and there's some point on it, x, y, then our angle theta here is measured from our standard, uh, from the initial side to the terminal side, and so that's right in there. When we exist like this, this r value is the point from the origin, 0, 0, out to our point x, y. It's that shortest distance. So, in this case, the sine of theta is going to be equal to our y value divided by r. Cosine of theta is going to be equal to the x value divided by r, and tangent of theta is going to be equal to uh, sine of cosine, or y over x. Okay? This is the basic premise for the next few videos that you'll be watching. Um, but yes, so theta is that angle in the standard position, and we're going to be looking at angles in all different quadrants. Okay. Hi there. So again, we're working with trigonometric functions of any angle. Okay? And here we're going to look at evaluating trig functions um, at a specific point. So in our problem here, it says let 3, 4 be a point on the terminal side of theta. Find the six trig functions of theta. Now, in this case, if we have a point given to us, we assume that we are in standard position. Okay? We're going to assume that we are in standard position. So just to get a quick markup of this, here's my Cartesian plane with y and x. And what I have is the point 3, 4. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 to the right and up 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So this point is on my terminal side of theta. So if I draw my ray from the origin through that point and continuing it on, we see that our theta here is from, again, our initial side, or the x-axis, up to our terminal side, which includes this point, and a line that runs through that point and through the origin. Okay? So here's our value of theta. What we're to do is find the six trig functions of theta. Well, in the beginning video, in your intro video, you learned that the sine of theta is equal to y divided by r. Now, r is a new value for us, but again, r is simply the value of the square roots of x squared plus y squared. Again, it's this distance from the origin to the point that we have. Okay? So r is equal to the square root of x squared versus plus y squared. So we should probably figure out what that specific r value is. Substituting in, I'm going to find that r is equal to the square roots of my x value, positive 3 squared, plus a y value of a positive 4 squared. So r is equal to the square roots of 9 plus 16. 9 and 16 is square roots of 25, which gives us the positive value of 5. Now, r is always going to be a positive value. 
We're always looking for the principal root. So R again will always be positive. That's something important to keep in mind. Okay? So our R value is 5. X is equal to 3. Y is equal to 4. And R now is equal to 5. We can find our six trig functions based on this. So the sine of theta is our y value divided by r. Well, y value divided by the r value, that's going to give me four fifths. Likewise, cosine of theta is equal to the x value r. Well, here we know x, i, and r, so all we need to do is take and substitute in. Cosine of theta is x3 over r5. All right, so we've got sine, cosine, the next common is tangent, and the tangent of theta is equal to y divided by x, and our y value again is 4 over our x value of 3. So that takes care of sine, cosine, and tangent of theta. What we need to do is finish off to get our other three for our total of six trig functions. Now, the inverse of sine is cosecant. Okay? So we need cosecant of theta, which is equal to one over the sine of theta, or r divided by y. And this time, r is going to be five over y, which is 4, and you'll notice here that the cosecant and the sine theta values, cosecant theta and sine theta, because we're looking at the same angle, they again are inverses of each other. You take one, flip it upside down, you get the other, okay? We've got cosecant. Now, the inverse of cosine is just secant, so secant theta is going to be the inverse of cosine theta, or r divided by x, provided that x isn't zero, and our r value again is five, divided by x, which is three. And lastly, we need the cotangent value. Cotangent of theta is going to be the inverse of tangent, or x divided by y, which is going to be three, So the way we found our six trig functions was to take, look at our triangle, uh, look at our, our angle here, identify theta, use the x and y point that we have to find r. r again is always a positive value, and then simply set up our relationships. Again, sine of theta is equal to y divided by r. Cosine of theta is x divided by r. Tangent is y divided by x, and then our inverses. Cosecant of theta is going to be r divided by y, secant of theta, r over x, and cotangent, x over y.